Wow, man. Dog, I had to come on here and turn on the camera. Dude, it is mad late. I don't care. I don't care, man. Bro. <laughs> Yo. Dog, I don't think a series of this length has hit me since Arcane. And it's crazy because Arcane was also an adaptation of a video game as well. These video game adaptations are moving different now, dude. They're moving different. Oh my goodness, man. Like, yo, I, it's been an amazing year for experiencing stuff for me personally. I've experienced some great, great stuff this year. Dog, this is right up there, man. Wow, dude. You know, it's tough to get this type of emotional investment out of somebody in like 50 episodes, let alone 10. 10! Yo, Studio Trigger once again has outdone themselves, man. You know, and when I watched the trailer, when I, the initial release trailer i was like hold up this is about to go in like i already know this is about to be a a great series that's at the very least going to be worth watching from a visual standpoint man but i was not expecting it to hit like this on an emotional standpoint dude yo spoiler free review <sighs> god <laughs> i don't know dog what you want me to say man what do y'all want me to say? You know exactly what I'm going to say. All right, so spoiler-free review. If you're watching it, finish it. And if you're thinking about watching it, prepare yourself. <laughs> prepare yourself, son, because my goodness. Yo, so that's it for the spoiler-free thoughts. I'm not going to be here too long. So let's get right into the spoiler discussion. Dude. You know, Frank Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon hits me different because of my attachment to Neon Genesis Evangelion, right? It does. But from the moment that the concept, the idea, was brought up in the first episode by Lucy and David, about wanting to go up to the moon as her dream. And the way that was explored in the first episode, I was like, yo, I love this. And everything that had to do uh, with that entire uh, uh, plot line, the connection between, between those two characters after that scene, it's, it was just so good. And I was wondering how we were gonna cut back to that. And I feel like that, fir that first episode, by the way, the... There's one thing, and I know this is this isn't something. It's it's like celebrating the what what we should be doing, bare minimum, right? But I want to bring it up as something noteworthy because I just really appreciate it about this series, and that is that it actually stuck to its guns in regards to the consequences of the actions of the main character, and so it's like he's using the sandy. And we're hearing that there are supposed to be these massive consequences to using this. If he does it at first, it was like more than three times, right? Like your brain is going to be turned to mush if you do this in this way. And we're like, how is how is that going to happen? What is this cyber psychosis that we continue to hear about? Because I haven't played cyberpunk, right? Like I, I haven't, I haven't um, gotten far into the game. Like I tried it out when it first dropped. So all of this stuff was foreign to me. And I think the anime did a great job of and and I, I i not only credit this series for that but i also credit arcane for this as well for someone who's not very familiar with the material for allowing me to become immersed into this world into these characters without knowing them beforehand right and so what i really liked about this and like i said on in regards to the the way that the sandy everything with the sand of Istan, and the repercussions, the consequences of using this. I love the way that was handled because that added stakes. Every single time that he used it, you saw that it was 
it, it was having damage. Like, it was having internal and external damage on David every single time. And the episode that really stuck out to me in regards to that was the main episode. Because you start off and you see Maine and he's walking, right, in the desert. And and I remembered, I think, the because I played, like, the first hour of, of, of Cyberpunk. And I remember that particular section of, like, going through the, the open wasteland in the desert... Um, before you even get to Night City. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh, snap. That, that, that's on the outside. And um, and so, but that main episode really showed me, like, yo, the repercussions here, like, there, there's no escaping them. Like, these are things that are going to happen. And even as that episode progressed, I was like, maybe there's hope for me. Maybe there's hope for me. Maybe there's hope for me. And as the episode continued, I feel like his condition got worse and worse and worse and i was like in 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 my heart it was it was really really hurting me because i was like man i was really starting to get attached to this character his relationship with the rest of the squad but then in my head i'm like man this series is really sticking to it like they're not going back on any of this dog like these this is these are severe repercussions for having all these modifications done on your body and the fact you can't handle this and I thought that was continuously brought up and brought up and brought up. But in that main episode, it really hit home. Not only the, re- the established relationship between the characters, right? To me, that felt like the go- going in, into the Gainax and Trigger thing. To me, that felt like the Guden Lagan episode 9. I believe that was the, the, the correct episode number where a, a, a situation happened where right after that, you could tell there was going to be a massive shift in the series. And that's how that episode felt for this, where I was like, man. And so right after the episode, you obviously see that David is going to have to change because of this. And then we go into the final stretch. Yo, dog, shout out to the homie Rebecca, man, for holding it down and keeping this man sane throughout all of that stuff right after that. Shout out to the homie Rebecca. She was a real G. But... The, the continuing relationship between Lucy and, and, and David really was the, the, the highlight from the very beginning. But, um, and then we continued to find out more like Lucy's backstory. And, and it was really interesting because uh, at first I was like, what, what are we actually doing here? Like, what's the purpose of like the edge runners or just runners in general? And, and, um, and then whenever we get to see what uh, she actually does in the network and stuff, I was like, yo, she's real deal. Mega Man Battle Network out here. You know what I mean? You know, hacking right into the mainframe with, with the classic old Mega Man Battle Network theme. I was like, okay, Lucy, you're kind of nasty, right? You're kind of nasty. But her backstory hit really hard. And it really, like, it made me realize how much that dream actually meant to her. Because whenever you're stuck in an environment like that, the only thing you want is to be free. And what more freedom is there than limitless space, right? Like being on the moon feels like you'll finally be able to reach the freedom that you've always wanted to have. And so getting that backstory was integral for, to understanding her character. And, and I loved it. For, I mean, I, I loved Lucy from the very beginning. But after, especially after that, uh, after that flashback, I was like, man, man, they are cooking here with it, Lucy. But, you know, the continuing stuff with David, the di- the downward spiral and the cyber skeleton stuff, dude, I was like, what are we doing, son? And it's like, it just continued every single episode. It reminded me of Space Dandy, where it was like every single episode had like unique visual quirks to that episode, unique stuff with its soundtrack to that episode. And I just, and I, because I was watching these pretty much like two episodes a night. It was one of those series for me. And, um... And it's always the nights. It's always the series that I watch at night that end up hitting me the hardest. Bro. I, I'm not so exclusively just watch these shows at night. Because they always hit. They always hit, man. And so, but then we get to the final section. And what was the name? Hold on. Let me, let me go to Netflix real quick. What, what, what was the name of the last episode again? When I saw the name of the last episode, I was shook, dude. The name of the last episode was um, My Moon, My Man. Yo, when I saw the name of the episode, I was like, no. Because I had a feeling after what happened to me, it like pretty much solidified itself in my mind. I was like, yo, David's not going to make it out, bro. I thought the others were going to make it out. 
but David from the very beginning, and especially after episode six, or what, that was episode six, right? The main, the main episode. After that episode, I was like, he's not making it out alive. Like, yo, David's not making it out alive. And they stuck to that. The way they handled and executed that was amazing. But it was the, the choices in music. The music placement in that final episode and the visuals. The visuals that connected back to the very first episode, you know, when he was just about to jump off um, right in the middle of the street. It, it gave the same vibe as, as the main episode. Like, you're, you're seeing this man is starting to lose himself. And I love how Lucy, like, you had, like, a, an actual visual representation of that with, like, David's head. You saw, like, six versions of his head. And Lucy, like, put it back together. Like, brought all six heads into one. Like, yo, I'm here. Stay with me, dog. And I just, I love how this series continued to showcase all that visually. Because, you know, we expected a visual uh, extravaganza with this anime. But I didn't expect the visuals to meet the emotional core of the story in the way that it did. It was just so good. It was so good. And then once again, going back to the homie Rebecca. When Rebecca in that scene was like, um... It, it, whenever uh, they was like, yo, if worse comes to worse and I lose myself, I'm counting on you to to put the meds in. And yo, to the very end, to the very end, she was there with my boy. I mean, I wanted a swing on Adam Smasher whenever he interrupted their moment. I was like, yo, you got to see me for this, bro. I, yo, I legit, I almost stood up from my bed and I almost pulled him up. I was like, yo, Adam Smasher got to see me now. <laughs> you gotta see me, son. You can't do that to the goats. You can't do that to the goats. And it just hurt because, you know, I was expecting this massive... And David did everything he possibly could. Everything, everything that he possibly could. And my man took out, took on the entire Militech uh, army that was coming towards him. Faraday in the Kiwi situation. Which, shout out to Kiwi. Yo, Kiwi was making me mad. And then, of course, we... Yeah, you know, Kiwi Ki 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 redeemed herself at the end, but still, Ki me and Kiwi had problems. Me and Kiwi had problems. But um, then we got to that uh, to, to that final encounter between Adam Smasher and and David, and, and it just it, it it was so interesting because I was wondering when Adam Smasher was gonna be brought up in like a flashback again, or like that connection back to the beginning, because it felt like they were calling back to everything in the final stretch to the very first episode. And the very first scene being the Atom Smasher stuff, and that's how we connect to it, is the Atom Smasher is the final enemy that they have to face. I was like, wow. Wow. <laughs> just wow, dude. And I um, mean, the way that was handled was just so good, man. And and the music, once again, dude. The music in that entire, in the entire series, music placement was incredible, but in, specifically in that last episode, bro. And that final encounter between Atom Smasher and David was... I just didn't expect it to go down in the way that it did, but it, it, it was it was excellent because it just left you with that feeling of like, brother, is this ha like is this happening? Is this actually happening right now? And it all did, man. It happened, and it just left this empty feeling, especially whenever you see Lucy on the moon. And then before that, you have that scene, probably my favorite shot in the whole, in the entire uh, ten episode run, was whenever he's in the cyber skeleton and he's with Lucy, and she brings him back. And they're both floating up in the air in front of the moon. It was a very reminiscent to the shot in the beginning, whenever she's carrying, she's holding him with one hand, and they're flying high uh, 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 with, with the moon behind them. And now instead, it's uh, they're holding each other with the moon behind. And I was like, oh man, yo, this is this is what I'm talking about, dude. This is exactly what I'm talking about right here. And I and I just loved it. And, but it just made it that much more sad when you get to the final scene. She finally makes it up to the moon. <sighs> Man, dude. And then you see David. He's like, yo, he's supposed to be right here with you. And he's gone. He's not there. Oh, man. And she's just like, oh. And then just when it couldn't get any more insane from a visual standpoint, from a shot, from a frame standpoint. Lucy does the Shawshank Redemption stance to finish it all off. And I was like, dude. I mean, I wanted to get out of my bed and just clap. I, I felt so empty. I felt empty because I just finished a great series. But I also felt that emptiness of like, yo, I just lost some goats, man. It was such a 
a heartbreaking, heart-wrenching finale. But I'm so glad I went on this journey with these characters. You know, up until that end, I was like, yo, this season two, this this is going to be so successful. They're going to have no choice but to put DLC into Cyberpunk. It was season two. I don't know about that anymore, too. <laughs> what? Season two? Woo! They're not going to do season two anymore. It was never in the plans to begin with. Man, dude, I felt so bad for Lucy, bro. Because it's like David's, you continue to feel bad for David as the series progressed, right? It culminated right there at the very end. But it's like he did everything for her, man. And it reminded me of the classic uh, theme that we see in stories is our dreams worth dying for. And we got to see Lucy experience that. Like everyone else that was lost on this journey allowed her to accomplish her dream at the very end, but at what cost? And it was just, it, it hit, man. It, it was it was a really, really beautiful series, bro. Like from top to bottom, like I said, the visuals for me were absolutely insane in terms of it was just a sakuga fest and and so many incredible se action sequences and just the most fluid animation you could ever want right in this in this type of series it was, it was so good but for me even more than that it was the way in which the visuals the the calm scenes the the focusing on the eyes at certain points or whenever uh, the characters would like like the david scene from earlier where he would shake and you would see like his eyes shake and then lucy would have to literally put him back together visually and that was representing like his mental state at the time that to me is where this series excelled visually like it's visuals from an animation standpoint out of its world but in those scenes where the visuals were showing the mental state of the characters and just you know the way that certain shots were framed to really let us feel the emotions it was just it was an, an outstanding series man seriously an outstanding outstanding series dog like I, I like I said man I went into this expecting greatness but I didn't expect to when I finished it to feel the way that I'm feeling right now dog like <laughs> it hit man it, it really really hit and so I just wanted to come on here and get this off my chest, dude. I, I was like, man, hold up, we're gonna have to do those classic, uh, those classic late night uh, uh, reactions to this, cause I just, I just needed to get this off my chest, man. You know, it was one, it was one of those finales where it, it hit different, man. It, and and I always say this, but I would have done the same thing for Arcane if I actually would have had the, 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 the camera like uh, ready to go. Because that was another one that hit me on a completely different level. Every single episode, every twist and turn, like it was structured like a like a, like a bingeable uh, a television series that will that, that you know Netflix is known for. You know where they always end the episode in a cliffhanger. The episode title goes uh, shows up, or either the episode title or the, or the actual series title. You know, go to the next episode. Like we're inviting you, go to the next episode. It's a classic formula. But the way this series handled it, uh, just I just loved it, man. And and you know, they they got some good stuff with these animated series, bro. I know they're trying to dip into the live action game, and I'm excited for the One Piece live action. And you know, they obviously see money in it, so they're gonna keep trying to do it. But yo, they have some great animated products, man. Like. Get some more animation out there, dude. Like, they've been hitting it out of the park. I haven't watched Castlevania yet, so I can't speak on Castlevania, but I've heard that one's really good. But out of the ones that I've watched, or at the very least, video game adaptations, dude, they have some heat on their hands. Focus on the animation. Focus on releasing some more series like this. And I know this is like lightning in a bottle type things, right? Like, not every series is going to be a Cyberpunk Edge Runners or an Arcane by the flag nerds if it even comes close your job is gr you did a good job if you even get close to striking for a third time here then i think it was worth it i think the investment was worth it and so i'm not the head 
Obviously, they're going to keep going down this live action uh, venture, and, you know, they probably should. Who am I to tell them otherwise? But by the Flagnars, they have some heat from an animation standpoint, man. They have some heat. And so, I look forward to the next Arcane, the next Cyberpunk, because obviously they know what they're doing here. And they're getting the right individuals to work on these products because my goodness did Studio Trigger knock this out of the park. And I remember when it was announced, it was like, oh, that's exciting because at the time the Cyberpunk was, uh, hype was really, really high. And we're like, okay, what is it going to be? And it's Trigger, so obviously we were going to give it a watch regardless, but I just didn't expect it to hit like this, man. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is another series to add to the already insane uh, quantity of bangers that have come out of Gainax slash Studio Trigger in the in the years right like this is just another one to add to the hall of fame of series that they've created this was a special series man it, it really was it, it it is definitely for me it should be in the anime of the year conversation at the end of this year man it was some some great great stuff and i'm so glad that i watched this before the october craziness because now i'm able to just watch this and now i'm gonna be able to to think about it over the next couple of weeks, really have everything sink in, be able to maybe possibly even rewatch it, dude, because just how good it was. And I honestly, I want now I really want to give this game a shot, dude. Like, I know I said the same thing for League, but you know, League's different. <laughs> League's different, man. I, I that that's that's one that I've that I've tried multiple times. It's just maybe it's not for me. But this is an RPG, all right, and I can do that. I can do an RPG, man, and so. I'll probably, I'll probably end up playing it, honestly. I'll probably end up playing it. Especially if they have DLC that has the characters themselves, dude. I would definitely love to play that. But, man, yo, once again, Maine, my dog, Rebecca, a real one, all right? A real one. David. You just you just knew that downward spiral was happening, bro. And Lucy, baby girl, man, she got what she wanted. At the end of the day, she was willing to throw away her dream as long as she got, as she as she as long as she was willing to to live with David from then on out. But she got her dream. And what a powerful way to end the series on, 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 on that, right? Not only does it make you call back literally to the beginning of the series, but thematically. It just really makes you think about what's important, you know? And when a series is able to do that, it's a good series in my book. So shout out to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Did a lot of things right. And like I said, man, vis from a visual standpoint, from an audio standpoint, they couldn't have done any better. <laughs> the, uh, the music placement. <sighs> what an anime. Seriously, what an anime. Studio Trigger. <laughs> Y'all nailed it. Y'all nailed it. What a great series. What a great series. I will see y'all next time. Have an awesome day. Hopefully, if you watched up until this point, you actually watched the series and I didn't just spoil everything for you. But if I did, then it's, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not my fault. I, I warned you already. Um, but even if you have been spoiled, you know, it's definitely something that if this is something that's up your alley. then give it a shot. Give it a shot because this was this was definitely a special experience. And so I will see you all next time. Have an awesome day. This has been Late Night Recon once again. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've recorded a... I think the last one I did like this was Marsh Comes In Like a Lion. If I'm not mistaken. Where um, where we did one of those late night videos. Super... No, that, that one was late, dude. Like, I'm recording this one late. That one was really late. That one was really, really late into the morning. But... That's how you know a series that's different. When we, when we come on here and do a late night, uh, it's, always the, it's always the night shows. Like I said earlier, it's always the night. I'm about to just, I wanted to start up another series. If, it's, if I start it at nighttime, it's going to be a banger. That's what, that's what history has shown. 
if I start it at nighttime, it's going to bang. Every time, man. It never fails. It never fails. So, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, absolute greatness. Just wow, man. Like, <laughs> my soul right now, dude. I need, I need something to fill it right. <laughs>